roast pork or siu you. It's a classic Chinese barbecue meat. It's my favorite because it has beautifully flavored meat on the bottom, some perfectly rendered fat, and really the only part that matters, the crispy, crispy skin on the top. It is so good. If you're new to kind of cooking, we do sous vide recipes and a lot of other things as well. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, let's get started. So when you go to buy pork belly at a Chinese supermarket or Western supermarket, mm -hmm. you look for the five layers. Yep. In Chinese, it's called mm fa lam. So it's like five layers of belly. So here you can see that there is meat, fat, meat, fat, skin. Yeah, I like to choose the thickest piece of meat I can find, but also the leanest. Because no matter what, you're going to have enough fat on here. So you don't need an extra, extra thick piece of fat. Like whatever you can find that has the most meat to fat ratio, you should go for it. Also, another point is that this is a boneless piece. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the bone or the ribs. So look for a boneless piece. It makes life much easier later on. It's fairly simple. We're going to only start with the meat side. So on the meat side, we're right here. We are going to add some five spice powder. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle on. Yep, get everywhere. Let's get all in there. In a lot of places, they cut off the bottom. We're going to keep it for this one because our meat is already not that thick. So don't put too much if you're gonna keep the bottom. Otherwise, it'll be way too flavorful, way too salty and inedible. So just put a little bit if you have a thin piece. And try your best to avoid the sides at this point. Although it probably won't make a big difference in sous vide, but you don't want that color to leach down. All right, keep going. Okay, pat that in. Okay, and white powder, white pepper, <laughs> not cocaine. <laughs> not that tower channel. Just a little bit, yeah. that's enough. Next, it goes into the sous vide bag. We're going to put the skin side on the smooth side. And so the final ingredient that we're going to add is rose wine. This is what the rose wine looks like in case you're wondering. We'll have the ingredients and the equipment that we use for the recipe in the description below. So the final step of this is just to vacuum seal. The pork has come out of the sous vide. Okay, I'm gonna put it right here. See all this beautifulness? It shrank a lot. It did shrink a lot. So the first step now is to wipe it, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna wanna dry it as much as possible. I already chilled it, okay? As soon as it came out of the sous vide, I put it into an ice bath. And so now it's pretty chill. It should be pretty easy to wipe off any excess liquid, uh, especially from the top. Okay, you can feel how nice and soft that is. And so I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see the marks of the bag and that's exactly why you don't want the skin on that side. So the next step that we're gonna do is going to make the skin super crispy. How do we do that? You need one of these. We bought this one that it rebounds back because we don't want you know meat or skin stuck inside and you can't get it out, right? So with this little mechanism, you can wash it off pretty easily. The next step is just to pierce the meat. You're gonna to wanna to pierce it. You wanna pierce it a lot. Don't be worried, just keep going. The one thing is you only wanna pierce this, the skin into the fat. We don't wanna go past into the meat because then it'll release too many juices. So we're gonna do this for a couple minutes. Make sure it's like very, 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 very holy. You want the fat to render and come out and basically fry in its own fat. And that's how you get the very crispy skin. Remember the first time we made this, we did it like one hole at a time. Like those skewer sticks? Yes. <laughs> one hole at a time. This is luxurious. So trust me, it's much easier to punch it now that it's sous vide than if you were to try and punch this before it was cooked. Why? Because the pork skin is actually really tough. You can get some paper towel and try to squeeze as much or soak up as much of this oil and liquid as possible. So the next step is we're going to wrap the meat part in some tin foil. Okay. And you want to do this because you don't want 
your meat to dry out. So make sure you cover up as much of the meat parts as you can. Okay. okay. So we will brush a layer of white vinegar on the skin to further evaporate the water content. Next, salt. A lot of salt. You're gonna need a lot of salt. You wanna work it all the way in. This salt is gonna dry out more moisture so you get a nice, nice, nice crackling. We're gonna put this in the fridge uncovered to let the skin dry out. Came out of the fridge, you can see how dry it is now. The moisture is mostly gone. So we're gonna wipe this off. Just try to wipe off as much excess salt as you can. Yep. And then we're going to pierce it again. You know, just so we can get out some more moisture as much as we can and allow the oils to come through when we are baking. We'll keep the foil around the meat because we don't want the meat to dry out and we'll do that in the oven as well. We're gonna put this in the oven for as hot as it will go. Uh, for ours, it goes to 550 on convection. So it just goes as high as you can go and just watch it so it doesn't burn and so it starts to bubble and crisp up. Our roast pork is done. We took it out of the oven. It was in there at 550. I think next time we might go a little bit lower. I think some parts got a little too dark before it finished up. I think somewhere around 400, 450 would, might be the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. We uh, just um, looked at it by eye um, yeah. to see how much crackling there was. Exactly. Um, I think it was about 30 minutes that we had it in there for. Approximately, yeah. 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 Uh, this did crisp up pretty well though. You can kind of hear it in there, hopefully. So, let's give it a try. Okay. Cheers. Oh, there's one thing. See, the bottom is, is pretty dark, okay? And what people actually usually do is slice that off. We decided to keep it, but you can definitely slice it off for something a little more aesthetic and a flatter piece. Mm. So I think the, um, the taste is good. The whole meat is flavored through. The skin is crispy, but mm -hmm. it's not as salty as I thought it would be because we did put a lot of salt on top. Yep. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions or feedback, let us know in the comment section below. It's a classic Chinese barbecue meat and... And what? It's your favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs>